Hey everyone, what's going on? It is Paramedic Coach back here with another video tonight. What we're going to be talking about tonight is cardiology, BLS to ALS. As you're tuning in, make sure to give me a hashtag live or on live. If you're on the replay, give me a hashtag replay down below. Uh, let me know if you're tuning in from Facebook or YouTube when you come on the live stream. I'm um, going to so put everything in the chat here. And we're going to get started as everyone is coming in. Uh, we got Nathan on the hashtag live. Uh, as everyone is pouring in, we're going to be going over tonight right here, cardiology, BLS to ALS in one live. So cardiology, BLS to ALS in one live. Give me some hearts, guys. Give me some likes. Give me a hashtag live down below. I'm going to get some water here before we get started. Uh, make sure my voice, my voice is good to go. And uh, then we're going to dive into it. So we are live right now. Cardiology, BLS, ALS. This is going to be day one of a three-part series of me going live. So if you're watching on Facebook, um, if you're watching on YouTube, uh, I'm going to be live here for about three days. Okay. This is day one. We have day two and day three. So let's do it. So we got Andre on the live, hashtag live. Darcy from YouTube on the live, hashtag live. Uh, thanks, Doc. Hey, uh, not a doctor, but I uh, appreciate your kind words, brother. Um, we have uh, William. Uh, thanks for tuning in, William from YouTube. Tiara, Adam, Aaron, Ruth. All right, I'm going to grab some water real quick. As you guys are coming in, give me a hashtag live. Give me a hashtag replay. And we're going cardiology, BLS to ALS. Let's dive into it. Here we go. All right, everyone, so I'm back. So what we're going to do here is first a few shout outs. I'm going to get started. So we got Shiloh, hashtag live, William, hashtag live, Myra, hashtag live, Marisol. I've learned so much in just half day of watching your videos, hashtag live. Oh, Marisol, thank you for your kind words about uh, the program. Uh, Daniel, hashtag live, what's going on from YouTube? Daniel, what's going on? Uh, we got Justin, hashtag live, what's up, brother? And we got Courtney Kelly, hashtag live, what's up, Courtney, how are you? Um, Courtney says, hi, you have taught me so much. Uh, Courtney, thank you for your kind words. Uh, Justina, hashtag alive as well. <coughs> awesome, guys. Let's dive into it. You ready to roll? Here we go. All right. So the reason why I want to go over cardiology on our first night of this live series is very simple, and I'm going to explain why it is, okay, is because I found so many students that mess up their medications that mess up what to do at a call, that mess up what to do in general in EMS, all because of this, all because of they don't know the why behind cardiology. So I have one simple goal tonight, and this is my goal with tonight's live cast, is for you to understand cardiology and the why behind it. So we're going to start all the way from BLS and move into ALS. This is part one of a three-night live event series. So we're going live tonight, same time. Okay, we're going to go live at 9 p.m. Eastern each night, okay? So we're live tonight. We're going live again tomorrow as well. And we're going live again the next day. So today's Friday. Okay, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, live, live, live. Let's start the show. Here we go. Now, the first thing we're going to do is for everybody watching is you need to know heart blood flow at an expert level. So we're going to go over it now. You're going to know heart blood flow like anybody else that you're a medic, an EMT, practicing, especially for my new EMTs. We can't give nitro if we don't know heart blood flow. We can't talk about aspirin if we don't know about other things. So let's start with heart blood flow, and we're gonna work our way down. You ready? Here we go. All right. Now, if you're coming down, guys, give me a hashtag live, give me a hashtag replay, if you're on the replay fam, okay? <laughs> now, here we go. Now, I'm gonna draw out a few different things here, okay? I'm gonna draw a circle as my heart, okay? I'm gonna draw a pipe over here, okay? All right, I'm going to draw here a box, okay? 
I'm going to put an L on this box. All right. I'm going to split this up like this. Okay. Here we go. The first thing we have to learn about heart blood flow and how and why blood flow does what it does is this. First, we start with the arteries and the veins. Okay. Let's talk about the tracks before we even talk about heart blood flow. Okay. The tracks. Arteries has the letter A in the beginning of it. Right. What does that mean? A means away. So arteries go away from the heart. Hey, what else though has an A in it? Aorta, right, oh right. The aorta, we'll, we'll get there. But notice, aorta has an A, it goes away from the heart, okay? Arteries go away from the heart. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Well, there's only arteries or veins. What do veins do? Veins go back to the heart. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Maybe you've been in class and you've heard deoxygenated blood and oxygenated blood. Now those words sound crazy. Those words sound crazy. Let me make it simple for you. Heart blood flow, our heart pumps, okay? It keeps pumping continuously every second that we're alive. It's the automatic pump of the heart, right? Right. Now, think about it. That's how, part, that's how blood is pumped around the heart. By the heart, it's the pump. Gotcha, Evan. Okay, now think about it. We know arteries go away and veins go towards. Okay, I'm gonna start drawing out some of my stuff here to understand this first, okay? So deoxygenated blood, it's a cycle, it's a system. Only thing deoxygenated blood is, is blood, that already dropped off its oxygen. It already dropped its oxygen off of the cells. Now what's happening is that blood is coming back to the heart to get more oxygen. And the heart works with its friend, the lungs. Right, okay. Now, we haven't gone through it yet, but these are some things I want you to keep in mind. Okay, deoxygenated blood. Sounds crazy, it's not really crazy. It's just that that blood already the oxygen's already delivered to the cells. It's come back to the heart for more. Okay. What about oxygenated blood? That's blood that has oxygen in it. Okay, we got that now. Now, let's just talk about the way it's flowing. Let's do it. Okay? Now, we have a pipe here. We have our heart, our lungs. Okay. Let's start drawing everything out. So, we have the right atrium. There's a valve here. We have the right ventricle, okay? Now we're gonna go over here. Well, what's that? I'm gonna explain, don't worry. Okay, I'm gonna explain, don't worry. Left atrium, got it. A valve here, gotcha. Left ventricle, got it. Leave it alone. Okay, now watch, we're gonna go here. Remember when I said earlier that veins are gonna bring back deoxygenated blood back to the heart? Yes, I remember that. Okay, let's break down these words. This pipe right here is called the SVC and the IVC. We give it a short name because it's so long. Right. Superior vena cava, inferior vena cava. What the hell does that mean? Let's talk about it. Okay, now, superior vena cava means... Superior in medicine means above. So if I say that this, this marker is the most superior marker I've seen in the whole world, I'm gonna put it up in the heavens. It goes high. If I take this marker and go, this is the worst marker I've ever seen, I'm gonna put it in the trash. The trash is on the ground. Superior means above, inferior means below. Right. But what's the vena? That reminds me of the veins. It's the venous system, right. But what did I say earlier? What I said earlier was that veins go back to the heart. That's what it's doing, got it. So think about it. I have blood all my head, my upper body, my limbs, my lower body, and all that blood is gonna pool, go through, 
and go right in to my right atrium. Why? Because the heart works with the lungs to get the blood more oxygen. That's what it wants. Got you. Okay. So now, this blood that already dropped off its oxygen because it's a cycle, drops off in the right atrium. Now, here's how I want you to remember atria versus ventricles. Think of the alphabet. A comes before V with atria and ventricles. So where's the atria? Above the ventricles. Why? Well, A comes before V. You know that. Right. Okay. What else do I want you to know? I want you to think of the atria and the ventricles as friends. Okay, gotcha. What I mean as friends is this. The ventricles are the stronger of the friends. So they ultimately have a job to do. Okay, watch. When blood goes to the right atria, the atria says to itself, the right atria says, I'm not strong enough as my friend, the right ventricle. The, give the right ventricle a job to do. The right ventricle, here's how you remember heart blood flow for the rest of your life. We're going to give the right ventricle a job to do. So give the right ventricle a job. What is the job of the right ventricle? The job of the right ventricle, what makes the right ventricle happy on this earth, is pumping blood to the lungs to get oxygen. That makes the right ventricle happy. Right. So that's what it does. It, it takes this root, this pulmonary artery. Hey, what's pulmonary mean? Pulmonary has to do with the lungs. Okay. That's why it's called a pulmonary artery. Got it? Right. Hey, remember before I said arteries go away? Wait. This is going away from the heart to the lungs. That makes sense. Okay. So here we go. Blood goes through here. Goes to the lungs. Now think about it. Okay, I'm going to breathe. What am I doing? What am I doing? Think about it. Carbon dioxide and oxygen. What do you think the lungs have? Oxygen. Right. That makes the right ventricle really, really happy. Right. So what are we going to do? Maybe you heard in class something called gas exchange. Oh, man, that sounds crazy. What the hell is gas exchange? Think about gas exchange as the right ventricle completing its task by partnering up with the lungs to give the blood oxygen. That's what gas exchange is going to be called in your brain from now on so you remember heart blood flow for this specific topic. Think about it like that. You will not forget it. Okay? Now, think about right ventricle right now. Right ventricle is so darn happy, it's gotten this blood to the lungs. Right? Right. So now, here's the blood. The blood's in the blood. It's got some oxygen. Great. Well, now what do we do? Well, at this point, we got to find a pathway to get this blood back to the heart. <laughs> the lungs aren't going to, the lungs, it ain't going to work in the lungs. Right? Right. So God made a pulmonary vein. Wait a minute. Didn't Evan say veins go towards the heart? He did. Right. So veins go towards the heart. The pulmonary vein. Okay. Now, what did I tell you earlier? Hey, what comes first, A or V? A, left atrium. What's going to happen next? Now the left atrium says, I'm just the atrium. Remember, the ventricles have a job to do. So the atrium just pushes it along. The atrium pushes the blood along. So now we're in the left ventricle. I want you to think of the left ventricle as the strongest part of the heart, okay? I want you to think of the left ventricle as the strongest part of the heart. Why? I'm going to make you think that. The left ventricle has a job as well. The job of the left ventricle is to pump blood to the rest of our body. Rest of our body. 
And how does the left ventricle do that? Who is friends with the left ventricle? Aorta. Aorta. Okay. And wait a second. Aorta has an A in it. What does that remind me of? Arteries. Right. That means it goes away from the heart and we're done. We're done. You just learned heart blood flow. How can you forget it? Watch. Aorta. And we're out. And we're out. Okay? There it is. Hard blood flow. So now we got that. Hey, I want you to know something very, very important here. Something called an aortic arch. This arch right here, super pressurized. If you have an aneurysm or a rupture right here in this arch, Think about how much blood volume is in that, how much pressure is in that. You, that patient is going to have a very bad outcome. And we have to think about that with chest pain patients. Okay? So now we got our heart blood flow set. I'm going to do a quick recap, and then we're going to move on to some drugs that you got to know. Okay? Now, heart blood flow. Beginning, I said, arteries go away because the A, V, well, doesn't, that's all there is. There's arteries or veins. What else do we have? Right? That's the pathways. Arteries, veins. Okay, one goes one way, one goes the other. Right. So A is a way. Well, veins do anything left. Veins must go back in the heart. That's exactly what happens right here with the superior vena, venous, and then inferior vena, cava, venous system. Okay? All the blood goes back here to the right atrium. Okay? We go through here, okay? By the way, if you're wondering, hey, what's what? What are these valves, okay? The main two, I, I, drew, I drew them out here earlier. I got to bring them up. Tricuspid, okay? Mitral, okay? Right atria goes through, passes it off to his friend, the right ventricle. The right ventricle has a job to do. What's the job? Well, get that blood that needs oxygen to the lungs because, remember, that's where the oxygen is. goes through the pulmonary artery, gets it. Mission accomplished. But now how do we get back in the heart? We can't just stay in the lungs. <laughs> that's not going to work out too well. Pulmonary vein. Okay. Now I'm going to move in to one simple thing now that we know this. Hang on. Okay. Now that we know this, we're going to move in to the next step, okay? Here we go. Okay. Everyone says, hey, Evan, another thing I get commonly. I want, to, I want to handle common questions tonight, and everything I'm going over is from message, messages that I've gotten from so many of you. Evan, I'm struggling with heart blood flow. Evan, I'm struggling with CHF. Evan, I, I need help with nitro and meds. So this is what I want to cover in tonight's live cast with cardiology, and we're going to be moving into some more advanced stuff too. But this is a start. Think about it. How can you give nitro to a patient without knowing that? Right. We're going to talk about it. So next is heart failure. Now that we understand that, let's talk about heart failure. Okay? Here we go. So we're going to draw a circle. Okay? Same deal. Same setup, okay? Here are our lungs. Okay? I'm gonna draw everything out. Okay? Just bear with me here, I'll show you how it works. Okay? Watch. The next time that somebody asks you, what is heart failure? You're going to say blood backs up. Blood backs up. I'll say it again. Hey, what's CHF? Blood backs up. Okay? Right. Now, what does that mean? And why do people with heart failure get fluid in their lungs? Why do people with heart failure get food in their legs and edema? Why? Why? Let's talk about it. 
Here it is. Here's our system that we know. It goes through like this, right? Right? Think about it. Okay. Goes through. Okay. We know that now. We got heart blood flow down. So what if the heart fails? Let's talk about this. If blood normally goes through the aorta to get pumped to the rest of the body, out. If, if the left side of your heart and the right side, if the left side of my heart fails as a pump and fails as a pump, what's going to happen? Blood backs up. So what's going to happen? Here goes the blood. This side of the heart, the left side, cannot be as effective as it once was. So instead of going forward, uh-oh, we're leaking backward. We're not strong. We're leaking backward. What's going to happen? That leaky blood, watch. Here it goes. Here it goes. Here it goes. Here it goes. Uh-oh. Here are the lungs. Uh-oh. Here are the lungs. Now there's fluid in my lungs. Now there's fluid in my lungs. Make sense? Right. Now there's fluid in my lungs. So in CHF, blood backs up. In CHF, blood backs up. Hey, the left side of my heart stopped working. Uh-oh. Well, I'm not going to go forward like a normal heart. Think about it. Make it easy for yourself. Blood backs up. Oh, I know heart blood flow. Left ventricle. Oh, I back up. Left atria. I back up. Pulmonary vein. Oh, I back up. Now I'm drowning in my fluid. That's it. Now, what if the right side fails? Hmm. Okay. So it's the left side. The right side fails. Okay. All right. The reason I teach it like this, and somebody may say, Evan, you're teaching too easy. You're teaching too simply. There's more to the story here, Evan. You're not thinking about this, think about that. You need to learn simply before you can move on to any advanced stuff. If you have no idea what's going on, then you're not going to know where you're at. If you can't even explain this, how are you going to explain anything else? So get this down first, and then we'll go to advanced. Fair play? Okay, cool. So what's if the right side fails? Blood backs up. Think about it. Here we go. Backs up, backs up. Wait a minute. Now I'm backing up into the venous system. Hey, what's that going to cause? Hmm. Well, I got an arrow. Here's how you remember it. Watch. Here's how you remember it. By the way, these are signs and symptoms of CHF. Here's how you remember it. Look at my graph. One arrow is pointing up. JVD. One arrow is pointing down. Edema in your legs. There it is. Wait, did you get it? Right side heart failure, blood backs up. The blood backs up in the venous system. One arrow is going up, one arrow is going down. Fluid in my legs, JVD, jugular venous, right? Makes sense? Right, distension. Makes sense? Right. So here's how I remember it. Remember the arrows, JVD. Okay, and what goes and what's going down here? Leg edema. CHF. Fair. All right, guys. So that's going to be CHF. Now we've gone over heart blood flow. We've gone over CHF. The next thing I want to move into now is some drugs, and I'm going to start with my two main drugs, which is and the aspirin and nitro. Remember, we're going ALS to BOS. I mean, BOS to ALS. I'm sorry. Okay, so we got we got to know that before we can do anything else. So let's keep pumping, all right? Everyone is watching live. Let me some shout outs. Give me a hashtag live. Hope you guys are doing well. So let's see here. I'm going to go through some comments here. Some comments, comments, comments. Okay, here we go. All right, Marisol said, I've learned so much in just half day of watching your videos. Hashtag live. Daniel's live. Justin live. Courtney live. Courtney, hi, you've taught me so much. Hi, Courtney. Thank you. Uh, Justina's live. Justin, what's up, bro? What's up, brother? Jenna, uh, hashtag live. Angel is hashtag live. Lamar and Cassandra are hashtag live. Uh, Justin, sweet. Adam, hey, what's up, brother? Hashtag yes, what's up? Hashtag live. Uh, Andrea, hashtag live. Uh, Kaylin, hashtag live. David, hashtag live. Julia on the live. Emily Coleman, hey, Emily, what's going on? She was our last winner. Hashtag live. Uh, Matthew, hashtag live. Adam, what's up, brother? Uh, hashtag EMS, hashtag live. Hashtag let's go. What's up, my man? Uh, cool stuff. This is live now. Yes, it is. We are live right now. 
Um, Matthew Bowen. Hey, Matthew's a new member inside our paramedic coach. What's up, brother? Uh, oh, wow, the timing. Yeah, we're on live, brother. Uh, Matthew, what's up, Evan? Take him an after on the 8th. Good man. Study hard. Keep watching the videos. And thanks for tuning in tonight, brother. I appreciate that. Uh, Natalie, hashtag live. Leanne, Jeanette, Rose, hashtag live. Hello, this is Delroy. I'm in class right now. Hey, what's up, brother? You're in class right now. Put, put me on the board, brother. Put me on the board. Uh, Rebecca, hashtag live. Um, we got a lot of comments here, everybody. We got cool stuff. Um, cool stuff says he's a student. Uh, good to know you, brother. Uh, so, dude, um, send me uh, cool stuff. I saw a long paragraph there, and we are live. If you have any questions, like long, long questions, uh, send me uh, send me a message on Facebook. Send me a message on the Paramedic Coach Facebook. Okay? Um, I just it's too long to read on the live cast. But thank you for your kind words, brother. Uh, send me a message on uh, Paramedic Coach Facebook. Okay? Hashtag live. Uh, Delroy said, what's up, brother? Uh, Gregory, my class starts next month. Gregory, that's a good thing. That's not a, that's not a sad thing. That's a good thing. Um, you are getting prepared for class. People that are EMTs don't even know some of that stuff. So, oh, and even medics don't even know that stuff. Okay, so good stuff on that. Uh, taking my test tomorrow, D. Kim, what's up? Gregory, hi, says laugh out loud. Uh, thank you, brother. Uh, my class starts next one too. Mark, this is, this is why I do this. Um, the whole reason I started with the paramedic coach was to have you prepare for class. That was the whole point of why I started all this. So you could watch and learn of why preparing for class, right? Those that really want to get prepared, go and get my program at prepareforems.com. Where there's that video vault, you can go through and learn before school. It makes school so much easier when you know the stuff beforehand. Because why do I do this? Think about it. EMT and medic school is so accelerated that people can't breathe and they don't get caught up in time and they fail. So if you study beforehand, then you go in more relaxed, you have an awareness. When you go in with no awareness, that's when people fail. This is why I have the paramedic coach. Uh, good luck. Good luck to you as well, Mark. Uh, Cody. Hey, Cody. She's a new member inside the paramedic coach. What's up, Cody? Hashtag live. Uh, Nicholas Perez. Hashtag live. What's up, brother? Darcy. This is awesome. Thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Tal. Hannah. What's up? Logan. Uh, Crystal, wow, we got so many comments on here. I hope I get there, everybody. Aaron, Shiloh, Kelsey, Hannah, Shiloh, Aaron, Bernardo, Gregory, Crystal, Craig, Jenna, Logan, Jazzy, cool stuff. On duty while watching why I can is Robert Donnell. Crystal is taking your NRMT on, on June 17th. And Gregory Hyde says, I'll order it. Awesome, brother. Welcome aboard. And hey, it's Devin. Devin, what is going on with you? Devin's also a member. Uh, inside. Oh, that's a D. Kim. Now it makes sense. Hey, Devin, what's up? Uh, and Julia, uh, take my NRMT on the ninth. Awesome. So anybody that wants to check out uh, the program that I have, what it is, is over 160 videos to prepare you for class, but also prepare you for your boards. So real quick, three people I suggest buy the program. Right now it's lifetime access for one payment. Here are the three people. One, if you're getting ready for school, Two, if you're in school now and you're struggling. Three, if you're studying for your boards. I'll put the link down below and we're going back to lecture. So all the details are in there. I don't want to talk about it too much. So it's video and audio lessons, 160. Um, and Aaron brings a good point here. I have trouble with the book learning. Videos like yours help me the most. Other than hands-on training, that's why I made the program. Exactly for that reason. I don't, I don't, um, I look down here because my books are actually holding up my laptop, <laughs> okay? So the books that I have, that's all I use them for, stacking up like this, literally. I'm holding them right now. I don't, I never gone through them. When I went to EMT and medic class, I bought this big book. I have the big book right here, the paramedic textbook. I never opened it. I just listened. I just watched. I sat in the front row and I listened, right? But I was thankful to have a really, really good instructor that I wanted to listen to on a recording. So my goal here is to make sure that I can do that for you, right? Pretty cool, awesome. Great stuff. Uh, I want you to contact for a long time, even before the website update. Hey, Kyle S. I think I know what Kyle S. that is, actually. Um, Kyle, what's up, brother? I think I know your last name, but I don't want to get it wrong. So I'm pretty sure I would know, though. But there's a few Kyle S.'s in the program, but I think I know who it is. Um, thanks, man. And let's go back to lecture. You ready? Here we go. Let's do it. All right. So we're going to talk about now uh, aspirin and nitro. Quick aspirin nitro. I get this question really like all the time and we're going to debunk it tonight 
So you know it, and it's never going to be a problem anymore. So what did we take care of so far? We took care of heart blood flow. Um, gone. Took care of it, right? We took care of heart failure. We took care of that. Now we're going to take care of aspirin and nitro for our BLS providers, and then we're going to move on to some ALS cardiology. Here we go. So let's do aspirin and nitro. Okay? Now, if I was to ask you, why do we give aspirin to a patient having a cardiac event? What's a cardiac event? They're having chest pain, they're having a heart attack. Okay, good job. Wanted to find that for you. Now, when we have a patient having chest pain, why do we give that patient aspirin? There's a reason behind it. I'm going to share it with you. First thing, for any of my medic students watching, drug cards are not hard. What do you mean, Evan? What do you mean they're not hard? They're not hard if you know what the drug does. If you know what a drug does, you fill in the entire drug card. Okay? Let's talk about it. So aspirin, what does it do? What is the job of aspirin? It's antiplatelet aggregation. Okay? Antiplatelet aggregation. What does that mean? What does that mean? Okay, well, let's draw it out. I'll put it right here, right underneath it. Let's say right here is the coronary artery that's getting blocked by a clot, plaque, platelets, sticking on each other, making the clot worse. It's overgrown. I'm trying to say these buzzwords to get you guys to think and visualize what's going on in the body. Watch. Here I go. Okay, here it is. So here's the clot. I only have this much blood flow left. The goal of aspirin is when I give this aspirin to the patient, the platelets will stop sticking to each other, to this clot here. So that way it won't go like this and occlude the whole vessel. And then you have a full blown heart attack. That's why aspirin saves lives. That's why we give aspirin for an anti platelet aggregation. Okay? Aspirin does not thin your blood. I don't know if it's a myth. I don't know who started uh, people saying that or thinking that. Maybe lay people, lay people think that. It's not true. Uh, aspirin does not thin your blood. So let's take that totally out of the equation here. Okay, does not thin your blood. Aspirin, no. It is going to help out the clot from getting worse. So if you want to put in your brain and think, what does aspirin do? It stops the clot from getting worse. What does aspirin do? Stops the clot from getting worse. Keep it simple. Got it. Okay, let's start from there. Okay, when do we give it? Now we know. When we, think about it. If we're going to draw a card, what, what's the indication? Um, when they have a clot in their coronary artery, we want to stop. Well, how are we going to know that? Chest pain, right? So the, it's really ACS patients is the answer. Acute coronary syndrome. Acute, okay, we have acute, we have chronic. Acute happens, acute happens like this, like that. Chronic, oh, you know, I've had a sore arm for about three, three, four months now, you know, and when I go like this, it gets, you know, it's, it, it hurts a little bit. That's chronic. I, w I was walking, I was fine. All of a sudden, pow, pow, pain here. That's acute, right? Acute coronary, coronary vessel syndrome. The event that's happening, okay? So that's aspirin. Do, what, what, now, think about it. When's a time we would not want to give this drug now that we know what it does? Just think about it. Don't overthink it. You may know what someone may have told you, but use your brain to think why they wouldn't want to give it. Here it is. You want to hear it? Would we really want to give aspirin to somebody who is bleeding out? That be smart. 
No. Because what does aspirin do? Stops the clot from getting worse. Remember I told you that, but see? This is why I give you these buzzwords. What does aspirin do? Gets the Makes a clot from getting worse. Okay. So if I'm bleeding out, I want my body to clot. Oh, shit. I shouldn't give aspirin to someone who's bleeding out. Is that why I say not to give it to people with GI problems, like GI bleeding? Holy shit. That's right. That makes sense. I'm not going to forget it now because I know why. Wait a second. Why don't we give aspirin to stroke patients? Hmm. Is it because we don't know what type of stroke they're having? And it could be a hemorrhagic stroke. Holy shit. That's right. What if they're having a brain bleed and I give them aspirin? Holy shit. Right. Fair play? That fills in the whole drug card. All we need now is dose. 81 milligrams. Now here's my question to you guys. Okay, times four is 324. You give four of these. Baby aspirin, chew it up, okay? Hey, real life scenario. I'm gonna step in front of the board to go to real life scenario. I've had patients um, before that, they've had chest pain. They have had no teeth. What do you do? Yeah, chest pain patient with no teeth. What do you do? Find their teeth. Okay, yeah, that, that's good. That's really good. I like that. Find their teeth. Um, but we also have to think about, can the patient take it? No, they can't. They can't. They got to chew it up. So that sucks, but you're not going to be able to get the aspirin. It's chewable. Aspirin can't chew it. Okay, number one. Number two is who doesn't get aspirin in chest pain patients? Who does not get aspirin? My theory is this, if you call 911 for chest pain, and I think using my brain that it is, that it is cardiac in nature, the only person who's not getting aspirin from me is someone who's allergic to it, bottom line, okay? If I think you have an heart attack and you have teeth and can chew the damn aspirin, I'm giving the aspirin. Unless you're allergic, that's it. Cause you gotta think about what's the worst thing gonna be, right? People, a lot of times people will say, I'll give, you, I'll give you an example, very common things. This is a real life example, okay? Not a test, a real example. You're, you have a patient, they have chest pain, they call 911 and they say, oh, I'm on Coumadin, I'm on Warfarin, don't give me the aspirin. My doctor says, don't give me aspirin, I'm on Coumadin, I'm on Warfarin. I'm on a blood thinner, don't give me aspirin, right? Okay, so did you call the ambulance for chest pain? And we're at now one point, I'm a paramedic in your head? Yeah, okay, you're, gonna, you're getting the aspirin, okay? That's how I do it, okay? Maybe you have a local protocol on that. That's what I do, okay? okay. And everyone, yes, you're right, chest pain. You're not wrong, everyone's right about that. I'm just giving you the why behind it, okay? So now let's move into nitroglycerin, okay? Let's move into nitroglycerin, okay? Here we go. We gotta know the why behind the drug to understand what it is. So here we go, we have nitro, okay? Let's do nitro. Here we go. Nitroglycerin. Pretty cool? All right, let's do it. So we have nitroglycerin. Everyone thinks right away, up oh, heart attack. Great. I, but that's more of an indication. What's the why behind it? Let's talk about it. So we have an MOA, okay? What the hell is an MOA? Mechanism of action. What, what the drug does, why we give the drug, is it called a mechanism of action? What the drug does when we give the drug to somebody that's a human, right? Okay. Well, what does it do? Vasodilates. Number one. Number two, the big one, decreases preload. Okay, let's talk about this, cat. Okay. What is preload? 
See the reason why we went over blood flow earlier. Think about it. Here's my chart, blood flow, right atrium. We're talking about right here. Decreasing the decreasing preload has to do with the amount of blood going back to the heart. Okay? That's what it has to do with. Okay? So decreasing preload is right here, right here, as blood comes in. Okay? So think about it. Okay. Vasodilation, right? Decreases preload. Mm -hmm. Why would we give this medication? Comment down below. What do you think? Why would we give a medication that does decreases preload and vasodilatation? Comment down below. What do you think? Comment down below. Let's see what we get. Why do we get why would we give nitro? What's what's the reason behind it? Comment down below. Knowing this, why would we give it? So, takes work off the heart, says Kelsey. That's very fair. Um, we have here less pressure on the pump, right, in the money. Anybody else have any comments? Those are both good. Heart failure. Andrew, you're right on the money. Okay. Widens veins. Yes. Okay. Right in the money. We're looking good. Everyone's looking good. Anybody else? Take this strain off the heart. Right in the money. We're still we're all in the money. Everyone's doing great. Anybody else? Widens wanes, widens veins. Gene, my man. I got you, brother. Don't I got you, brother. Don't worry, bro. I'm, I'm just fucking with you. <laughs> I got you, Gene, my man. I got you, brother. Gene, what's up? Gene's an awesome guy. If you're not connected with Gene, he's pretty cool. Also, adjust a new two man more. Gregory has, uh, Gregory has, Gregory, you popped right in. Sorry about that, brother. Greg popped in, said, being pump. Rice 2G says, yo, what's up, brother? Town Devons, let's, let's us change. Okay, let's talk about it. So you're writing the money. So a lot of you guys say a lot of great things. Think about this. There's a claw here, right? This is, this is the way that the, the structure is set up. If I give nitro, I'm going to open this up like this. Now I'm going to, instead of having this little space, I'm going to have all this space. That makes sense in your brain, right? That's a good way to remember it. Okay, got that. The crease preload, exactly. Has to do with taking the strain, the pressure off the heart. Think, the heart is in failure. Do we really want it to work so hard? That's an easy way to remember it, okay? So everyone's right in the money. Good, good answers here, good answers here, okay? Now, we talk about nitro. We know the why behind it. So now when do we give it? Another, another person said heart failure. That makes sense. Because now we understand it. Good job. I like that. Okay? When else do we give it? Now we know this. Again, and my patients. And my patients. Okay? Hey, by the way, if no one's ever told you this before, I'm going to tell you right now. I remember when I was in EMT school, I really struggled with uh, the word myocardial infarction. I really struggled with that. Um, and I was like, what the hell, man? I, I've been saying a heart attack my whole life, and now you want me to say myocardial infarction. What the hell does that mean? Um, so let's break it down. So when you are in EMT school, you know it. Okay, here we go. Myo has an M. Okay. What else has an M? Muscle. Got it. Myocardial. You kind of maybe you know cardiac is heart. Cardiology is heart. Myocardial is the heart. Heart muscle. There it is. Now you know it. What's infarction? Death. Infarction, death. Death of the heart muscle. There it is. All right. Now let's move on. So now that we know this, we're, I'm going to give you a, a, a few different uh, scenarios here on what you would do. Okay? So let's talk about it. Okay? So we got down the BLS. That's good. We got our BLS down pat. Great work. Okay? We went over, heart, we went over the heart blood flow. 
It went over heart failure. It went over aspirin. It went over nitro. I want to give you guys a quick test here. A quick test to see if you're paying attention. These are easy questions. I just want to make sure that you're paying attention. Okay, ready in the comments? Here we go. Three, two, one. What does aspirin do? What does aspirin do and what is the dose for an adult patient? What does aspirin do and what is the dose for an adult patient? Three, two, one. Fire in those comments. All 37 of you, fire in those comments. What is aspirin and what's the dose for an adult patient? What are you doing? Comment down below, comment down below, comment down below. Okay, okay, comment down below. What's the dose for a adult patient? Comment down below. Why do we give it, why do we give it? Okay, so we got a few answers here. Good, good, keep them coming guys. Kelsey, you are right on the money. Kelsey Page Martinez is right on the money. Darcy is right on the money. Good job, good job, good job. Ryan, Mona, nothing wrong with that. I thought of aspirin nitro as doing the same thing, opening the heart, breaks up quants, but I'm still learning specifics. So Aaron, maybe you, maybe you just came on now, you've been on for a while, so we talked about it. So you wanna think about it is, so aspirin doesn't break up the clot. It's not a clot buster. Aspirin makes the clot from getting worse. So if I have, again, if I have, if I have a pipe and the clot's like this, aspirin's not going to break up the clot. Aspirin's going to say, hey, clot, no more platelets can stick on this clot anymore. So this room that I've left is free. Now I give nitro, I'm going to open it up. Now I have all this space here. That's the, that's the teamwork, okay? Medicines that are clot busters Okay, anticoagulants, those will thin the blood. Those will break up clots, okay? That's not aspirin, though. Aspirin does not, does not, again, N-O-T, does not thin the blood, does not break up clots. It stops clots from getting worse. Okay, close your eyes, everybody. Aspirin, what does it do? It makes the clot not get worse, okay? The clot doesn't get worse. If you don't give aspirin, it's gonna get worse. And then they're gonna have a full occlusion. Full. And then, they can, then they're gonna have a full heart attack. That's how you remember it when you're trying to remember, okay? The dose is 324 milligrams. That's four, four, 81 milligram aspirin. You give one, two, three, four baby aspirin, chew it up. Got it, good. Okay, next question, make sure you're paying attention. What is the job that I gave to the right ventricle? What is the job I gave to the right ventricle? Three, two, one, file those answers. Hey, what's the job of the right ventricle? Hey, what's the job of the right ventricle? What job did I give the right ventricle? Move, let's do it. Comment down below. We have about 46 people on the live cast. <laughs> Myra, how's it going? Oh, oh Aaron, Aaron, you're good, brother. Yeah, don't, uh, don't feel that kind of way, brother. Aaron, I just uh, I just want to make sure you got it down, brother, because this is, this is the training ground here, man. It's the training ground, man. I want to make sure that you that you know it. That's why you're here. Thank you for tuning in. Uh, we got some tags here. Hey, Ryan, thanks for, thanks for tagging a friend, brother. I appreciate you. Uh, Delroy Brown says, help reduce pain, feeling, and two pills for an adult patient. Uh, so, Delroy, uh, so Delroy, it's going to be uh, for aspirin. Uh, it's going to be four, four pills, 481 milligrams. Um, Shiloh uh, is shouting out Timothy Brighton. Thanks, Shiloh. Uh, and Angel Honeycutt, 324 milligrams, 81, prevents the clot from getting bigger, makes, makes the blood slick, anticoagulant. Okay, I'll take it, I'll take it, but aspirin, it's not anticoagulant, antiplatelet. Anticoagulants are, are gonna be separate. Um, it's good, it's gonna be more of like your Coumadin, Warfarin, Plavix, Pradaxa, 
those kind of drugs. Okay. So I try to separate them. I try to separate them. Okay. So separate aspirin in a field of its own. And then the blood thinners are going to, we're we'll talking about those in other lives. They're in their own world. Okay. So make aspirin anti-platelet aggregation. Okay. Like platelets aren't going to stick together. The clot won't get worse. And then Coumadin, Warfarin, Plavex, Pradaxa, those are going to thin the blood. That's an anticoagulant. Aspirin is not anticoagulant. Okay. I want to clear that up. Thank you for your responding. You're awesome. Uh, Aaron, oh, sorry. I did not explain that. Aaron, you're totally cool, brother. Um, Myra, I can't close my eyes. That's okay. Uh, oh, we have a lot of answers here. Wow. I'm t you guys are too fast for me, man. 10 4 is Kaylin. Ryan says, What if they have an inferior STEMI? 2 3 in ABF? Do you attach your fluids? Ryan, you're asking great questions. That's going to be in our that's going to be in our ALS our ALS uh, section. Okay, um, this is a three day live going over cardiology. So we're starting with BLS cardiology and we're moving into ALS cardiology. Um, so we will go, be going over that later. Don't worry. Good good question, brother. Uh, Angel said sends the oxygenated blood to the lungs. Right ventricle equals pumping blood. Sure. Um, to make it more, to make it better. The right ventricle is going to pump blood where? It's going to pump blood to the lungs to get oxygen. That's how we're going to remember it, okay? Um, weight, uh, it needs to be oxygen. Okay, Tiara. Hey, Tiara, what's up? Tiara is also a member inside the paramedic coach. Uh, pump deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Money, pump to oxygen to lungs. Jazzy B from YouTube, you're on the money. Mario, pump deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Mario's on the money. Uh, Kyle S, right ventricle. Kyle S, you're on the money. Uh, John Prentice Porton, look for look for a right side involvement. John, good man. We're getting there. Uh, Hope Grace Parr, thank you for explaining that more. You got it. Ryan, yes, sir. Thank you. Always give aspirin chest pain. Myra, uh, that's a really good question. So here's my take on that. And maybe you, some of you are just tuning in live right now. So just probably watching these questions are coming up. Um, if you just tuning in now, watch the replay to go back over if, if you have questions, but I'll explain that now. Here's what I do. If someone's calling the ambulance for chest pain and they're in the back of an ambulance with a paramedic, and I think it's a cardiac related issue, and I think this is a cardiac case, there's only one thing stopping me from giving the aspirin. Only one thing. They're allergic, that's it. There's nothing else stopping you from giving the aspirin. If you pick your phone up, call 911, you're having chest pain, you come to me, I think, man, this guy looks like it could be, it looks like a really, this looks like a cardiac case. There's nothing you're gonna tell me I'm not gonna give you the aspirin. Because aspirin saves lives based on what we know. Okay. Uh, Aaron, good stuff. Aaron says, again, for, yep. Yeah, uh, we would be getting for angina as well. So that's the thing, Aaron. The thing is, as EMS providers or any provider, we're not going to know. So if someone has chest pain, you're going to give aspirin to that patient. Again, that's why I go back to my golden rule. Hey, you called 911 for chest pain. I'm bleeding with my, my clinical skills. This looks like it's cardiac in nature. Okay. What do I mean by that? We're going to go talk more about this, but I'll give you an example. You can have chest pain, but it's pretty clear you're having an asthma attack. This is called medicine. So you've got to practice medicine, you've got to use our brain. So if I go to someone who looks like they have a clear cut asthma attack, I don't think I'm gonna give them aspirin, but if they have chest pain, the chest pain is because their lungs are tight. You see? So you gotta use your clinical skills and your thinking. We're gonna talk about this more, but yes, if someone has chest pain, giving them aspirin also. Think about it. Is aspirin really gonna hurt a patient? What side would you rather be on as a provider? Would you rather be on the side over here where, hey, I gave aspirin to chest pain, but it wasn't cardiac? Or would you rather be over here where, oh, you know what? I didn't give the aspirin because I thought it was something else. Give the aspirin for chest pain. They're calling 911. They're not going to a primary care doctor. They're calling 911. That's why I'm, that's why I'm saying you're getting aspirin unless you're allergic to it. If you have chest pain, I'm going to give you aspirin, okay? You've called the ambulance, call 911. How many times have you called 911? Right. Think of it, right? Makes sense? Okay, cool. All right. Now, Shiloh says 2-3 AVF, no nitro, right in the money. Good stuff. Okay. So, right ventricle. We've already talked about the right ventricle, okay? Everyone got that right. Good stuff. Okay. 
So now what we're going to talk about, I want to make sure everyone's on the same on the same team here, okay? Hey, what's the thing I talked about earlier? What do arteries do? What do arteries do? What do arteries do? What do arteries do? I talked about it earlier if you were watching live. What do arteries do? Ready, set, drop it down below. Drop it down below. Drop in the comments down below. What do arteries do? I talked about it earlier. And then we're going to move into our last tip of the night, okay? What do arteries do? Drop it down below. Okay, there we go. There we go. There we go. There we go. Okay, the tip from earlier was artery. The A in artery is away. Arteries go away. Good job, guys. Proud of y'all. We're learning. Love you guys. Great job. Good stuff. Great stuff, guys. Great stuff. Great stuff. Great stuff. Great stuff. Okay. So that was the BLS that we got to know. That was the BLS that we got to know. Okay. Tomorrow's live stream is going to be at 9 p.m. Okay. 9 p.m. Eastern time. And we're going to move in, inch forward, into ALS land. Okay? We're going to inch forward into ALS land, okay, with cardiology. Okay? So if you want to learn more, stay tuned. Tomorrow night, 9 p.m. Eastern, we're going to move in to some ALS cardiology. What is that going to entail? Well, more medications. Hey, what is that going to entail? It's going to entail more EKGs. We're going to talk about EKGs. What else is it going to entail? Stay tuned. Got some cool stuff for you. You may not have heard it before. I'm going to talk about some ALS cardiology tomorrow night. Now, who should attend this live tomorrow? Anybody that wants to learn more in the textbooks should come back tomorrow at 9 p.m. on the live cast. If you want to learn more in the textbooks, come back live tomorrow night. We're going to dive into some ALS cardiology. Now that we have the, the roadmap and the structure, now we can move on from there. Great job, guys. We've got some cool stuff coming at you tomorrow, okay? So stay tuned for that. Now, real quick before I go, I have some huge announcements coming over the next week, like giant announcements, like the craziest stuff I've ever done in my career announcements um, here at the Paramedic Coach coming up in the next week. Stay tuned to me on Facebook, YouTube, TikTok, Instagram. I'm going to pop it up on one of my social medias. Make sure that you're one of the first to take action and see it, okay? There's going to be a huge, huge changes and huge, huge things coming soon, okay? I'm talking about the biggest giveaway I've ever done, ever, at the Paramedic Coach. is coming up soon, okay? How to do it, it's coming soon. Just know it's going to be the biggest one yet. And going to start within the next week, For the next seven days, I'll be announcing our next giveaway. Now, what are we doing right now? Right now, here's where we're at. If you like this lecture and you want to learn more, I'm going to put a link down below to prepare for EMS course. Very simply, if you're one of these three people, and this lecture gave you value tonight, one of these three people, okay, person number one is someone who's getting ready for EMT, advanced EMT, or paramedic school. Join this program. If you're someone who's struggling right now in school, you're trying to understand the why behind what you're doing, and you're not where you want to be, join the program. I can fill in those gaps. And finally, there's someone studying for the NREMT inside this program. We get lifetime access, no monthly payments, is the NREMT, brand new NREMT accelerator. We are having people pass every single day. If you go to my Evan Paramedic Facebook, every single day I'm having people pass this program and get through this program. It's incredible. And they're passing their boards in one shot. It's incredible. Um, I've had people that... I, I, I got a powerful message today, and I, I want to share it because um, I was just so proud of it. And someone messaged me today. Maybe you're watching live, and somebody messaged me today saying they went through EMT school twice and that they failed their boards eight times. 
and now they're inside watching the content inside the video vault, and they've learned more in, in my video vault, which is only $50 for one-time access, more than two EMT classes combined. It's crazy, it's crazy. Um, that's how much value is packed inside this program. If you're, if you're getting ready for school, get access. I'm gonna put the link down below and I will see each and every one of you tomorrow night at 9 p.m. Eastern. We're gonna move in some ALS cardiology. Love you all. Thank you for your kind words. Thank you for your shout outs. Thank you for everything, all the kind words throughout groups and forums and what we do. I really appreciate all of you. This is just the beginning. And this next giveaway, I think is gonna rock the entire EMS community. Stay tuned.